Hey, good morning. It's uh, Saturday morning, August 14th. I'm Councillor Glenn Gower. And this morning for the update, I'm here at the community garden, the JoJo's Community Garden on Stittsville Main Street. This is um, uh, a really special place. A few years ago, JoJo's donated a very large piece of land at the back of the property for use as a community garden. And thanks to Kim Bonin and all of her volunteers, it is really thriving. Um, many many garden plots here lots of vegetables and fruit and flowers you can see a big tall sunflower over my shoulder there and uh, there's a few gardeners here today um, I also noticed uh, lately uh, Jojo's has been doing some some special events here they had a band here the other night and uh, so watch for that it's a good chance to come out and enjoy maybe an ice cream or a slice of pizza and some live music or activities uh, maybe the, uh, maybe sometime soon we'll be able to get back to some of the movie nights that Jojo's used to host here as well some really great events here at the community garden. Just a reminder, the community garden itself isn't a public place, so you cannot go in and pick your own vegetables or anything. All of the plots belong to individual gardeners who uh, maintain the plots and uh, the vegetables belong to them. But uh, you know, if you're, if you're in the area, take a walk by and have a look. It's a really lovely place along Stittsville Main Street near Bray Street, across from the Voss trailers, roughly. Um, I hope you had a good week. I uh, did not do an update last week because I took a bit of time off. I dropped my card. Um, but I'm back this week with lots of updates. Uh, head to my website, as always, glengower.ca, and there's a ton of information there. So I'll give you some of the highlights today. Uh, first is on vaccines. So um, a really important update from, from Ottawa Public Health this week. They have released data showing vaccination rates neighborhood by neighborhood. And I was really glad to see that Stittsville is one of the top neighborhoods in Ottawa. 89.2% of Stittsville residents have had at least one dose and 79.3% of Stittsville residents have received at least two doses. So that puts us above the average for Ottawa. But what we're seeing is a lot of, um, a lot of variation from neighborhood to neighborhood. And in particular, some of the disadvantaged neighborhoods in our community have a lower rate. Also, some of the rural areas around our community have a lower vaccination rate as well. And um, one of the messages from Dr. Etches is they're asking, they're asking why, why is there a lower vaccination rate in these areas? And there's some very systemic reasons why that's the case. Uh, yes, there may be people who are, are vaccine hesitant or uh, don't want to get a vaccine, but there's actually some very specific barriers in place that are preventing people from having access to the vaccine. Things like not having access to paid sick leave. So I remember when I had my vaccines, after both of them, I had some side effects, uh, had to take some, some uh, time off work the day after. There are people in our community in Ottawa here who don't have the ability or don't have permission from their employers to take that day off work to recover, let alone to go and get that vaccine. So that's something Dr. Etch just said, if you're an employer, make sure your employees know they can take time off to get a vaccine. It's very important. There's other barriers like language, transportation, access to a computer and internet, uh, childcare, even a lack of a primary health care provider, you know, for people who don't know, uh, don't have someone they feel comfortable or that they trust asking questions about the vaccine. So these are all barriers and Ottawa Public Health and the partners are working to break down these barriers. Uh, one of the basic ways, for example, is mobile vaccination clinics. They are taking clinics to the communities, to local parks. Um, if you have a workplace, a place of worship, a community group, if you have an assembly of people getting together and you think there might be a need for a mobile vaccine clinic to help some of some of the people uh, have access to the vaccine a little easier, uh, check out ottawapublichealth.ca or give them a call. They will bring a mobile vaccination clinic to your church, uh, to your business. So we all need to work together to make sure that we, we uh, get that vaccination rate higher across all parts of Ottawa. Okay, uh, on a lighter note, uh, there was a great story this week from Ottawa Bylaw. They, um, they had a call about a bearded dragon lizard on the loose in Stittsville. They were able to pick up this lizard, uh, took care of it. It was kind of a lost and found story. Really happy to report that Phoebe, the bearded dragon lizard, was reunited with her family. Uh, they live in the Snowberry area in the south part of Stittsville. So that's good news. Thanks to Ottawa Bylaw and thanks to everyone who saw the post from Ottawa Bylaw and helped to connect the dots and get uh, Phoebe the Lizard back to her family here in Stittsville. 
Uh, on my website this week, we posted some information and a link to the new, a new survey that the city is running about curbside garbage pickup. Our landfill is filling up fast. There's only a few more years left in it. Uh, we could build another landfill. It costs about $200 million, not exactly a, an expense that anyone's looking forward to, uh, let alone where would we even put a landfill within the city of Ottawa. Uh, so what we're really focused on is how do we get more people to reduce their waste and divert their waste from their garbage into recycling, into green bin, into compost, etc. So we're running a survey to get your feedback on several options for changes to curbside pickup of waste. So check that out on my website, glengower.ca, or you can go to the city's engagement site, engage.ottawa.ca. We would really like to get your feedback on that so we can uh, uh, understand where the public's head is at, what kind of options are most fair, favorable to you as we start to think about changes. Um, I had a number of calls this week about dirt bikes and ATVs on pathways or racing down streets or even people on these uh, vehicles without helmets and so on. I just want to uh, remind people that if you see a dirt bike on a pathway or racing around a park, you can call 911 and report that. Police want to know about that because you know if they're going around a park, they're most likely damaging the field, so that's property damage. And if they're on a pathway, they are potentially putting people's lives and safety at risk. So you can call 911 to report that. I also had a few calls this week about dog waste, continuing to see people not picking up after their pets. Um, I, I always feel almost ridiculous reminding people about this. I thought it was obvious if you're a dog owner, you need to pick up after your pets and you can bring that bag of dog waste home to your compost bin. If you put it in a compost bin in a bag, it will be collected and it's the best way to uh, dispose of it. And that way it doesn't go to the landfill. It goes to the, uh, to the compost instead. We have a couple of road closures, three, well, two road closures, one road uh, construction uh, that I wanted to make you aware of. First of all, Palladium Drive, scheduled to start on August 23rd between the Auto Mall and the Queensway. That's going to be shut down. They are building a new roundabout there to connect the north end of Robert Grant Avenue. Uh, it's a little bit confusing if you're trying to figure out in your head what that map looks like. Go to my website, you'll see some information there. That's going to be a couple weeks starting on August 23rd. The other road closure is Rouncey Road, um, kind of um, in the area where the, the construction access was. So just south of Rouncey Park is probably the best way to describe it. Um, they're going to be doing some repair work on a sewer line I believe it is there so there'll be some closures local access will be maintained and if you're a property owner near either one of those sites you'll be getting a notice in your mailbox soon about what's going on and how that'll impact you the uh, other one I wanted to mention is along Terry Fox Drive roughly between Abbott and Hazel Dean uh, there's going to be some lane reductions due to some construction there over the next little bit hope you can join us on Wednesday for our information meeting about a development proposal for 620 Bobo Link. This is in the Westwood neighborhood, just west of Robert Grant Avenue. There's a proposal from Ridgecraft for 84 stacked townhomes. So if you have questions, comments, uh, or would like to learn more about that project, uh, we're doing a Zoom meeting on Wednesday evening. Also this week, uh, it's Monday at 4.30 p.m. I really wanna highlight this great uh, webinar that's being hosted by the Goulburn Museum and it's titled Indigeneity in Canada, a webinar. It's being hosted by local Stittsville resident, Jibby King, and she's gonna be talking about uh, uh, colonial history, about the ongoing impact of uh, colonization on indigenous people in Canada today, and talking about just some general themes around truth and reconciliation. I think it's a really important topic and a really important conversation. And uh, Jibby, thank you for, uh, for, for stepping forward and, uh, and sharing your expertise and your knowledge about this for the community. You can go to the Goulburn Museum. I think it's goulburnmuseum.ca, but you're probably better to Google that. And uh, you can find all the information there to register. I'll be attending, it's 4.30 on Monday. I think that's it for me today. It is a gorgeous day, not a cloud in the sky and a little bit cooler, thank goodness. So I hope this weekend you get a chance to get out and explore your neighborhood, all the great parks and locations here in Stittsville. Support a local business if you can, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care, bye.